Okay, that seems to be a little bit better. So now I'm going to record this so you can see it again. So what I've done so far is I dragged in a resistor and a photoresistor. So the photoresistor um, just gets placed on my breadboard somewhere. Um, and then my 10K resistor, so again, I highlight that and I change it to 10K. By default, it's 1K. Um, and just make sure that that 10K is going to power and it's also going um, to line up with one of the pins on my photoresistor. And then I'm going to put a ground wire on the opposite side. So if I'm putting my 10K resistor to power on the left, then I can ground the right. Uh, one thing I mentioned as well is that when you're doing these wire colors, make sure you're using the proper wire colors on Tinkercad, as well as when you're building these circuits in class. It is going to be important as we get to more complex circuits and final project time that if I'm coming to take a look at your circuit to help you troubleshoot, if it's just a bunch of random colored wires, then I won't be able to see quickly if you have ground in the right spot, power in the right spot, so on and so forth. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is do an analog read. And I asked a poll question in the classroom, um, and most of you agreed that 84% uh, of you said it's going to be analog in. So remember, because light level can have a varying levels, it's not just light on, light off, it's going to read in a range of values. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that into one of my analog pins. Change that to orange or something. Okay, so that goes from the same pin that my resistor is hooked up to power, my left pin of my photoresistor, and then that also, that same column goes to my analog input. The opposite pin goes down to ground. Now for this code, uh, I'm going to go into text code to show you what that looks like. Um, I'm not doing any LEDs yet, so I'm going to uh, get rid of that for now. And I don't need to set any input or output or pin mode because I'm using one of these analog input pins. So down here, these analog pins, um, these allow me to only read in. So I don't need to tell the Arduino whether it's input or output. So I don't actually need to do anything for setup at this point. But the one thing I'm going to do is I talked about the serial monitor the other day. Um, but the serial monitor uh, will be used to kind of see what the output is. Um, in a text format so i can kind of read in what those in so what i use is serial.begin and 9600 is the default refresh rate or baud rate and i'm going to use that in order to uh, print to the serial monitor which gives me some text output as i'm running to it okay so once i set that up um, on the actual arduino ide it gives me a chance to set the baud rate or refresh rate um, so i'm welcome to you know double check that but 9600 is the default, so as long as I put that in, it'll work on Tinkercad, and it'll work by default on um, Arduino as well. So what I want to do now is I want to do an analog read, because I'm reading in from the analog value, and the pin number I'm reading from is A0. I should note that I can use A0 in here or just 0. Uh, the analog read 0 will know to do A0, but it accepts either A0 or 0. So I always put an A0 because it gives me a little more information and it reminds me that I'm hooking it up to A0, not accidentally hooking it up to here uh, in pin 0. Okay, 0 and 1 I can't use for input or output. Uh, those are other communication pins that we would talk about more in a grade 11 or grade 12 class. So this analog read, um, what I want to do with that, this would return a value. So what I'm actually going to want to do is I want to print this value, so serial.println. println just means put each print on its own line. Um, if I didn't use println, I'll show you in a second what that looks like. It would just print my results side by side, but I'm putting the println will allow my results to be printed one line at a time. So what I'm gonna do now is I can start the simulation, okay? When I do that, you'll notice that on top of my, um, on my, um, photoresistor, I can click on it and it gives me this little um, slide to affect kind of the brightness going into it. So right now it's very dark. You can see that, you know, if, if it was very dark in the room, uh, the result that I would get is, you know, close to a thousand. Um, if it, as it gets brighter, 
in the room and my serial monitor might be a little bit delayed. You can see that it starts changing the brightness. So you can see the output value is changing um, all the way down to if it's super bright, there would be very, very low resistance. Um, so, or sorry, very high resistance. And so you can see that the results, again, they're a little bit delayed, um, start decreasing uh, even more, okay? Um, so again, if I leave it somewhere kind of in the middle and I wait a second while this uh, serial monitor catches up, you can see that it'll slowly start increasing um, uh, that value. And again, if I continue moving it, it should, again, I apologize for the delay. Um, it will start changing um, the, the value that it's outputting. Okay. So again, it is quite a delay and I do apologize for that, but you can see that in fact, my um, values are increasing and it's quite a delay because I think it's still gonna jump up again uh, in a moment, but you can see what that uh, what that looks like in terms of the output. Now, what I can do with that is, and, and my example that I give for this photoresistor in real life would be automatic headlights in a car. Okay, so what I could do is, if I had um, you know a headlight in a car, or if this was say a garden light in your home, um, you could have what this brightness is affect the LED. So what I can do now is I'm going to hook up my LED to an output pin. If it was just a simple night light, I could use a digital output pin. So let's say pin 13. And then as I've always been doing, I resist this to ground. In class, you'll be using a 220 ohm resistor for most of your LEDs. So I will change that here to 220. 220 ohms, not 220 kilo ohms. And that means I can use pin 13 to do some output. So now, because I'm gonna use one of the digital pins, I do need to give it some information. So the first thing I'm gonna do is declare an LED pin. And I'm gonna call that 13, because that's the pin that I'm hurt hooking it up to. I'm gonna have to do uh, pin Pin mode um, LED pin is output, okay? And then I can start making some decisions about this read, okay? I'm gonna uh, create a variable up here called threshold. I don't know if there's two H's in threshold or not, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna set that to say 200 for now. And essentially what my threshold is, is I can adjust that. So it kind of decides at what point of darkness or brightness do I affect the light, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is instead of just printing out uh, the serial, cause I know that causes quite a bit of delays, I'm gonna get rid of that serial print. And all I'm gonna do now, actually hang on. I'm just gonna comment them out for now so I could reuse them later if I want. Um, but for right now, what I want to do is I want to say if analog read at pin A0 is less than threshold, and then I can decide whether I want my LED to be turned on or off. So in that case, if it's up below the threshold, um, it'd probably be pretty bright. So I'm going to say um, digital rate. LED pin, and I want this to be uh, low, because I think if, if um, the thresholds, if it's below the threshold, then it's it's bright out. Um, so then I end that if, so it's saying if that is true, turn the LED low. Because I only have two conditions, it's either going to be less than the threshold or greater than or equal to the threshold. It's only an if or an else. So I don't need to give another condition. I can just say, if it's below the threshold, turn it off. This else essentially means otherwise. So 
if there's only two cases, I just need an if and an else. So otherwise, I'm going to say digital rate LED pin high. So if the threshold is, if it's above the threshold, that means it's dark. So I'm going to want to turn on my LED. And we'll see how this um, works over here. So now, other than making some sort of mistake that somebody should be able to catch for me very quickly. Um, if I didn't spell threshold the same way in both spots, that was my problem. I didn't spell it the same way. Um, in both spots. I'm not an English teacher, so I don't know how to spell threshold very well, but I think now I have it correct and Google confirms. So just the error I was getting is because the variable that I declared up here wasn't spelt the exact same down here. So that was the error. So far, that was the only error I got. Let's see what else I get here. Now it seems to be good. Right now, my LED seems to be on. And the, again, I don't want to turn on the serial monitor just yet. So you can see that I have it very dark. My LED is on. Um, if I increase the brightness to a certain point, and again, there might be a little delay. There might be a little delay. Now it looks like my LED is off. So the LED is off right now. If I make it dark, the LED gets bright and turns back on. It's a little bit hard for you to see, but you can see right now the LED is on. If I turn it all the way to bright, then slowly that LED, quite a delay, I apologize. It slowly turns off. I'm looking at two different monitors, but I think it looks like it's off now, okay? Uh, just to confirm that, what I can do, because I'm using serial.begin, just to make sure my code is doing what I'm expecting it to do, um, I can, instead of, I can print my value, and then I can also print in here whether my LED will be high or low. So I can say serial.println, and I can say LED off. And then down here, if my LED is on, If I run that code again, I open up my serial monitor. I'll be getting a value as well as whether my LED is on or off. So right now, my LED is very bright. There's quite a delay, but you can see that I'm above the threshold. So my number is like up near 1,000. But if I drop this down to zero, and again, I do apologize because this is going to be delayed quite a bit. One Mississippi, it's like a race for the bell. I do apologize, I know the bell just rung, um, but a video will be posted, so if you do have to leave immediately, you're welcome to leave. Um, and I will chat with you guys again tomorrow at two o'clock, but I just wanna see that after the, the bad, bad delays, that it eventually turns my LED off. So you can see now after a little bit of time, a lot of time actually, um, you can see that my threshold dropped below 200 and then now my LED is off, okay? So hopefully that helps explain how we can use a photoresistor with a certain threshold to create kind of a night light situation or to turn on headlights um, when, uh, when it gets dark out on our car or exterior lights on a home. Everyone have a great afternoon and I will uh, chat with you soon.